talking about that game between Chelsea and Arsenal. Yana, finishing 1-0 to Arsenal. They are still at the top. They are two points clear. Do you love that bit of arrogance that the team have right now? You feel like you've not seen that in a while with this Arsenal side. And they've just got this belief, it seems, and this confidence in themselves that things are going to be okay. Yes. And, you know, obviously that comes with confidence. Uh, I think, you know, uh, I've been part of teams where managers always tell you, you know, to be confident, to go out there and to do the job and then uh, you're capable of it. But until you start doing it, it's just coaches talk. Right. And and I think that's different right now because Arsenal have been continuously proving that they're capable. Right. It's not just to say that we can, but knowing that you can, it's a whole different story. And we've talked about their character. We've talked about their their spine, if you will. And and look what's happening. Right. I, I, I mean, this is a, and I know, you know, him. Uh, you go back to La Liga with Thomas Partey. And so do I. But I think we've seen we are seeing the best of Thomas Partey right now where he's dominant in the center of the pitch. Xhaka uh, continues to benefit from that because all of a sudden the pressure is not on him. Remember where Arsenal were struggling, right? It's And and, and Granit Xhaka was struggling either with the, with, with the fans or with the red cards and all that because I think, you know, and as, as captain, I, I think that, that he couldn't hold on to that pressure. The team wasn't full or wasn't complete, if you will. And now we see that balance and that goes all the way from the back where... How many times have you been saying that if you put all Arsenal center backs together, you wouldn't find one that's at the level that's required? Well, look what's happening right now. Uh, I mean, cer cer certainly William Saliba has been a revelation. Gabriel is thriving next to him. But think about it. I mean, they, they even have fullbacks who are center backs who can play uh, yeah. just in case they need it, right? Uh, if you look at Ben White, and let's not forget Tomiyasu, who for Japan plays as a center back as well. So things and the narrative is changing because of the confidence and because of the plan that Mikel Arteta has told us about three or four years ago. But let's be honest, none of, the, none of us believed it. Yeah, and they're getting smarter as well. You mentioned in Cheka, I mean, we'll see if it lasts, but that you can see moments where usually when he might have been riled up, he's getting a bit smarter to not letting that happen now and not hurting his team. So why do you think it is now that Miguel Arteta, who had been maybe a little bit more reserved about saying it, which is, of course, always smart, but suddenly he's saying himself, yes, we are title contenders. Why now? Well, because I think he sees that his team is passing all those tests, right? I mean, ever so often they get knocked down. We saw that uh, even recently in Europa League, maybe meaningless in some ways, but it wasn't for him because, you know, uh, uh, once you get that buzz of winning, you want to continue doing that. So against PSV, they didn't. It didn't hurt them. They bounced, right? I mean, you look at this this as a massive test, right? Everybody's looking, okay, let's see if Arsenal's for real. And we sort of say that because we, we're waiting for them to maybe lose two or three which, by the way, may happen uh, again. But I think if it does, now Mikel Arteta can go back to some of those matches and say, OK, PSV this or Saints uh, point away, which, as I've said over and over, it's a pretty good point away from home anyway. Uh, but now he, he can go back and say, well, look at Chelsea. We went to Stamford Bridge and we dominated uh, Chelsea in every aspect of the game. I don't think it was even close, even though the score maybe doesn't indicate that. But I think if you look at within the statistics, the important statistics, it was all Arsenal. Let's stick with statistics. And I want to talk about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang facing his former team. Did you expect more from him? It was just eight touches in 64 minutes on the pitch. Well, I, I think I, I expect uh, you know, obviously, right? Because even if you were called on Pierre Emerick Aubameyang for a while, I think that the what I would call a cameo at Barcelona, the few games that he played there, he looked like uh, a player that's capable of getting back to his best. The best meaning that maybe you know the the the, the Dortmund years and the Arsenal years where where he was dominant, he was scoring uh, uh, scoring at will, even though Arsenal was just starting this process of of, of rebuilding as well. So. You think against your former club at Stamford Bridge at home, you'd feel like you have a point to prove. Uh, but again, uh, I don't think Arsenal allowed him to to do anything. Let's be honest, and let's talk about the the center backs. The job they did on him was superb. But again, he. he I don't think he went out of his way to do absolutely everything that's possible to show that he's still at the top echelon of strikers in the world. All right. It's interesting that we're talking about him, though, as well. And 
going up against your former team. And I know when it comes to some of these commercials, you might be given a script as to what to say. But we did see Gabrielle's tweet afterwards saying, nothing personal, London is red. And that was in response to the commercial that had gone out for the broadcaster in the UK, where Aubameyang had said, like, you know, nothing personal about going up against his former team. Do you mind Gabrielle doing this? Because I feel that like we see this a few times from Arsenal players now, that they respond after they win to messages they've seen in the media. Yes, I think you have to be careful with that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mikel Arteta addresses that stuff inside with his team because I think you still have to uh, stay humble. Arsenal has... I, I, you know what? I, I mean, maybe he addresses... But I, I don't know if he's behind it a little bit as well because he's been using some of these media messages to, to get them riled up, I feel. Yeah, well, he maybe uses that inside the dressing room, but he probably doesn't want that to right. go... Because when you, you know, let's be honest, Arsenal haven't won anything just yet. So you have to be careful. And I think, you know, if you look at Mikel Arteta and the way he gives the press conference, conferences, he doesn't give away anything, right? He Obviously, expectations are high, but it, it, he doesn't go out there saying, yes, we're on our way. I, I haven't seen that uh, just yet. So I think he's going to be careful in terms of how he, what the message that he sends to his players to say, okay, it's great. I love the ca confidence. I love that you think that we're, we're on our way, but just be careful here because, you know, being humble in a league like in any league is is what I would probably do. And that would be my my message to the players. Yeah, the message from Aubameyang Yang was uh, Arsenal, nothing personal. I'm back. I'm blue. I'm ready. So I mean, maybe there could be some advice on to be a bit more careful with what you say before these games. As for Chelsea, only two points out of 12 in their last four games. Are you worried for Pro for Potter? When does the pressure start build on him? Because we do still have to remember this is a side that isn't completely his. He is quite new. Where, where do you stand on this? Yes, I think the pressure will come. Uh, he continues to have the same issues as Thomas Tuchel in terms of going forward, right? Uh, uh, I think I understand again because we've seen it time and time again. It, uh, again, that you know the, some of the players that he's missing are it's just making it difficult to play the way he wants to i was glad to see that he went four in the back right uh and sterling didn't have to be a wing back but again he was maybe one of the worst players on the pitch uh, i mean it didn't help him when when he was playing a wing back in the last couple of games yeah you could use that as an excuse but now in the formation where where potter went in the, uh, uh, with that little bit of a diamond in the midfield didn't play well absolutely dominated in the center of the pitch Jorginho. Couldn't tell what he was trying to do. Uh, Loftus cheek on the on the right hand side. Mason Mount very very poor on the left hand side of that. And Kai Havertz. I'm just starting to wonder if he's going the way of uh, Timo Werner. I mean, how many chances does he need really to get going consistently? Is he the sort of man that you continue to uh, put your money on as you build this right? Even when everybody's back. And as I've said, without Reese James, and now on top of that, you don't have Ben Chilwell it really makes it difficult for, for Potter or anybody that would be there to say every game, the formation just doesn't fit because these players aren't, uh, aren't available. Then you have to play a lot of, a lot of you guys out of position. So it, it makes it difficult, but this is Chelsea football club. Nobody's going to cry for them. Uh, they still spend a lot of money on their new ownership. And, and at the end of the day, I think Todd Bowley, as we've said it, when he took over, he may be, Roman Abramovich 2.0. I don't know how much patience he's going to have. By the way, I'm not sitting here and saying it's time to go for Grand Potter. Absolutely not. Uh, look at Mikel Arteta. We all know it takes time. Ten Hag, you know, week in and week out. Yes, he's getting things right. Then the next thing, he gets lost within within himself. But I think that you've got to give these uh, managers a little bit of time. Just before we finish on Chelsea Arsenal, then, I want to go back to speaking about Arsenal because I want to focus on Gabriel Jesus. No goals in his last nine. There has been no panic about this because of what he's been contributing to the team without his goals. Where do you stand on it, Yanish? Well, I mean, we, we talk about this process and progress of of uh, Arsenal. And, and I think uh, Gabriel Jesus, I continue to think that he's a significant player in every game, even if he's not scoring. This was another example of that. Uh, but I think we can all agree that Arsenal, if they want to go to that next level, uh, being consistently in there as a challenger for the Premier League, in the in the Champions League, fighting for, uh, for that title, will need a true number nine because he isn't. Pep knew. 
I mean, there's no, you know, there's one one manager that I just go by because he hasn't let me down for the most part in terms of identifying players, right? In, ter in, in terms of maybe knowing uh, what you can get out of them. You know, Sterling comes to mind uh, uh, and, and, and Gabriel Jesus as well because he's not your true number nine. And, and I think it's almost unfair to think that he's going to be that sort of a player that's going to get you 25 goals or 30 goals consistently as others do. And and you almost have to have that. If you want to be at that level, you have to have the Mo Salah of the world, the, the Harry Kane of the world, uh, uh, the, the Erling Haaland of the world. You have to do that. And, and I think that uh, Gabriel Jesus... Uh, could do with the ability to play through the middle, but also uh, uh, wide, which he often does, right? I mean, I was actually uh, frustrated with uh, Gabriel Jesus just a little bit in the last couple of games because he kept on drifting left into the space of uh, uh, Martinelli, who's been outstanding and who doesn't need anybody to come into his space. In fact, you want to take players away from there because of his ability uh, to take players one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that they need a bona fide number nine. I I'm not going to say when, I'm also not going to sit here and say that Arsenal aren't capable of staying at the top of the table. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.